Now here at the Mohegan Sun, uh, Nathan Navaldi and Christian Vasquez, and uh, they join us here at the Wolston. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm doing great. Pretty good. Is it a little, we'll start with Christian, who had such a good year last year for the Red Sox behind the plate. Is, is it kind of awkward? I mean, spring training starting soon, you don't even have a manager yet. Uh, yeah, it feels weird, <laughs> but, you know, we need to continue to do our stuff, you know, that's, don't stop us to keep working and get ready to spring training. Nathan, is it a distraction not knowing if, I mean, you don't even know if you have Mookie Betts because that trade's kind of held up in the air. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things going on right now, but I mean, like Christian said, we got, you know, you focus on spring training, you're ready for the season, and I mean, manager right now or not, I mean, we got work to do. Mm -hmm. Do you play the underdog role or do you feel that you're still a, a good enough team to compete and, and go to the playoffs? I mean, I definitely still feel like we're a good enough team to go out there and compete. Uh, you know, I'm feeling great this year. Sales looking good. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the rotation's coming back strong, so. Christian, it's interesting, though. When, when a team gets players, like the Yankees got Garrett Cole, they get excited. Yeah. You guys, looks like you're going to lose price and bets. Is that something that depresses a, a team? We, I mean, do you guys call each other up or text mm -hmm. each other and go, can you believe we lost Mookie and, and, and Price? Yeah, it's tough, tough decision, but, you know, we, we don't control that, that decision, you know. We're going to miss them, you know. Those guys bring good memories to us all that years, and, you know, it's part of business. How, how culturally important to the team is, was Mookie? Obviously, we know he's the, the, a player that little kids all root for. He's one of the most popular players and best players in the game. But for you guys, locker room-wise, what's it like losing a Mookie Betts? Yeah, I mean, he's, he starts every game off leading, leading off. And, you know, most of the time he's getting on base and scoring. He's making those great plays out there in the outfield for you. Uh, you know, he's a great teammate to have, and it's great to have him out there behind you. And, you know... I mean, we're all going to, we all have to deal with it, and, you know, somebody's going to be able to step up and fill in those roles. Nathan, you're one of a few select people in the history of baseball. I mean, there have been not a significant amount, but enough that have played on both sides of the rivalry. How different is it on the Boston side than it was on the Yankee side? I mean, each, or each organization's a little different. Um, I mean, you still go out there and you play the game. The fans on both sides are amazing. You know, they... I love those, the, the, you know, when we play the Yankees, and that rivalry and stuff, uh, the fans are always out there, and it's just the support that you get from both sides. It's it's really awesome to be part of. Is it also hanging over the Red Sox head is punishment that might come down from Major League Baseball from the 2018 team. You guys are both on that team. Are you worried about what might happen? And did you guys do anything wrong in 2018? I don't feel like we did anything wrong. I don't think anything's going to come of it. Um, you know, I think it's kind of the follow-up with AC being over there uh, with the Astros. Do you think he did anything wrong, Christian? No, we don't do nothing. You know, I think... I was there every day, and, and you know, it was, it was, it was, what, we need to see what happened in a couple of days. When they fired Alex Cora, what are your thoughts, though? You think they fired him because of what happened in Houston and not with the Red Sox? Uh, I don't, you know, I think he decided to step up, you know, of, of the team because that's going to help us to play better. You know, I think that's going to help us to manage better the media in, in, in Boston and, and, you know, you know, he take care of us a lot, you know, he loves us, you know, he's like a father for us, so we're going to miss him. Uh, it's funny, yeah. uh, well, Nathan, I I've heard from so many people, and everybody has great things to say about Alex Cora, and I've heard that the Red Sox organization, it killed them mm -hmm. to part ways with him. Was he that great of a manager that we hear from the outside looking yeah. in? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. He's, uh, you know, everything like Vasky said, I mean, you don't want to see somebody lose their job, but I think it's kind of the same situation like with Beltron, how he stepped down from the Mets. Um, you know, he doesn't want to be a distraction for us, and he knows that we have a, you know, that we're preparing to, you know, have another winning uh, winning season and stuff. He doesn't want to be a distraction for us, and, um, you know, he, from my understanding, he reached out to the Red Sox and told them that he wanted to step down. There are a lot of rumors that somebody could manage this year and that the Red Sox, we had on Dan Shaughnessy yesterday, said, I could see the Red Sox bringing him back in 2021. Can you believe that would happen? I mean, I believe that could happen. Uh, you know, again, it's going to be up to him if he wants to, you know, get back in there and do it. But I, I don't see why he wouldn't. I mean, he was he was that good for us. Yeah. Christian, you've credited the Molina brothers for helping you become a catcher. What what specific did you use from them to become a professional catcher? His his attitude in, in home plate. You know, I like that to be a leader in, in home plate, manage the the pitching staff. Like Jari, Jose, when he played, Benji, and, and I think I love that. You know, I love that passion of the game that 
I see them like me, you know, and, 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 and it's, it's fun to watch them. Talk with Nathan Evaldi and Christian Vasquez here uh, on the Michael K Show, both of these gentlemen uh, on the Red Sox. Um, 2017 Astros, it was proven that they did do something wrong and there were punishments. Did you feel that they were cheating? I mean, at that point, Nathan, did you did you sense? Did you hear the the banging of the trash can that we all hear about? I mean, I, I want to say I heard the banging, but I, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I right. Mean, as a pitcher, you're aware that guys are trying to steal your signs. That's why you use multiple signs with runners on base. And uh, I mean, I mean, I was surprised to learn the extent of it and everything that they were doing. But I mean, to I don't know. It's like that that different side of it. You know, as a hitter, you're you're on base. If you're a good hitter, it's like. You're trying to help the other guys out at the plate. How about you, Christian? Did you think they would do something wrong in 2017? I never heard something. I, I, I heard some whistles. Yeah, but whistles. Yeah. On the trash can. Yeah, yeah but nothing crazy. like, you know, I was in that kind of my career. I was so young. Right. You know, and I never pay attention to that, you know, and and, and now I'm growing like a player and, and, and you know, and now it makes sense, you know, everything. Now, another big thing, and, you know, we had the Yankees on before you, Gary Sanchez and Adam Adovino and Gio Urshela, that, you know, there's some doubt on, on whether or not the Astros had buzzers on last year. Did you think that there was something weird was going on last year? I don't think, you know, it's, we won four games, like three games in, in, in Houston mm -hmm. uh, that year in 2018, and, you know, I never heard something. Yeah, I mean, I've never, I'd never heard of the buzzers until they started coming out or started talking about it after the investigation. Would right? that take it to another level, though, if it was buzzers? Yeah, I mean, that would be pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, I'll tell you what, I, I've been a baseball fan my entire life, and what you did in the World Series in 2018, I'm sitting there in front of my TV, and I was getting chills. I said, this is heroic, and, and not because of what you were doing, but you were doing that. And you were going to be a free agent. You could have blown your arm out. Did any of that even enter your mind as you were doing that stuff? No, I mean, none of that entered my mind at all. I, you know, I'm sitting down there in the bullpen, and I know I had a chance to come into that game. And, you know, if I did, then, you know, it, I'm trying to stay in there the entire time. Um, but, I mean, yeah. I, it's a nice ring you have. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think when he was doing that? I mean, do you look at him and go, that, guy, that guy's a hero to us? Yeah, I remember when Alex yeah. made, made that meeting after the game. We lost that game. That month he hit a homer. He tells, you know, that guy is, you know, have everybody respect now because what he did that the game. I remember when CeCe was with the Milwaukee Brewers. Mm -hmm. And he pitched on three, three days rest, three days in a row, and he was going to be a free agent at the end of the year. And his agent said, don't do it because mm -hmm. you're going to be a free agent. He said, no, I have to do it for my team. Yeah. So you never think of, of what you could be losing? Yeah, and I mean, all I was thinking about was that we're so close. We're yeah. so close to winning, and if I'm the last guy in the bullpen and I can go out there and stay out there as long as I can and go through their guys, I mean, hopefully we're going to come out on top and we only need to win one more. How exhausted were you? I mean, I was tired afterwards, but I mean, with the adrenaline and everything, I felt good going in there. And, you know, like Vasquez said, I gave up that home run and it was over. But, I mean, it was a turning point for us. Like, uh, we AC gathered all the guys up in the clubhouse afterwards and, you know, kind of just congratulated me. What did that mean to you? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, having everybody, I mean, I don't know. It's the first time I had lost a game in extra innings. Uh -huh. So, you know, you have that one run, even though like, you're going out there and you're pitching well, the game's over and it's on you. If you don't give up that home run, would you still have been able to pitch more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> For machine. I don't know that that adrenaline and the World Series and everything out there in the game. Yeah. I mean, no, nobody left the stadium. It felt like uh -huh. it was awesome. And there was no fatigue, so it was just a mistake to Monty. It wasn't that you were tired. I mean, I'm sure I was getting a little tired there towards the end. But I mean, if you go back and look at our bats before, you know, I I ended up walking him the first at bat and then the second at bat. Uh, I was able to get him on the back door cutter, and I went back to it that night. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, he was able to get it. So when made the adjustments, yeah. Good yeah. Hitter. So when a player, you know, thinks about the contract or thinks about his long-term health, is that something you look down on, or do you just say, "Hey, listen, teach their own. Everybody's got their own idea of what's best for them." I mean, I don't, I don't really know too many guys who are in, in the moment thinking like, "Ah, oh, you know, I'm worried about my contract. I'm worried about next year." I mean, we fought so hard to get to that point yeah. this season, and right. we're that close to winning. There was no doubt in my mind. See, but with you, Nathan, there. I mean, I'm not telling you what yeah. to think because, I mean, you had such a history. You went through that mm -hmm. two times, and you were this close to cashing in, yeah. and you're, you're going inning after inning, and it never entered your mind. No, not one time. Wow. That's awesome. So I had legitimate goosebumps. I had a right to have <laughs> yeah, goosebumps. Right? Those were legit. I didn't even have a rooting interest. I said, but I knew Nathan from the Yankees, and he was a good guy, but 
but I mean, I just I was amazed as I, as I was watching it. Yeah, speaking of goosebumps, uh, Nathan, you, you played on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. The Yankees Red Sox rivalry is something that fans are obsessed with. Mm -hmm. You guys are professional ball players. You make a ton of money to play this game. It's your living. It's what you do. The first time you play in a rivalry game like that, how much do you actually feel it? And how much is it more a, a different thing for the fans, but not quite the same for the players? It's crazy, yeah. It's first time I play in Yankee Stadium when I heard that right field, you know, every, everybody say, cheating. Yeah, about, the, about yeah, the, the, the last name of everybody was very cool, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a big, big rivalry, you know, Boston and, and Yankees, and I think mm -hmm. I love it. So I mean, we, when we ahead. feed off the energy too, as players, yeah. I mean, we feed off the fans back and forth, and uh, you know, I feel like they hype it up, and it's a lot more fun. What makes the fan bases different? I don't know. I mean, I mean, they both hold, they, they both have the high expectations and everything. Um, you know, I feel like the Yankees fans are a little bit more ruthless out there. <laughs> you know, they. I mean, our Red Sox, of course, you know, they want you to win too. But I mean, the Yankees fans aren't afraid to boo you. I remember with the uh, that uh, when we made the wild card against the Astros in yep. 2015, and they were booing, booing the hitters. Because they couldn't hit Keuchel. Because they couldn't hit Keuchel. <laughs> they were booing them, but, then, but I mean, they would hype them up at the same time. Right. And it's like nothing came of it, and then they would boo them. So, yeah. I mean, it's like you got to go out there and you got to perform as well. Exactly. And going back to the World Series and stuff and saying how, like, asking if I had any doubt or anything, AC, again, saying, like, how great he is as a manager. Like, every inning he'd come in at, coming down there and asking me, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Can you keep going? And I'm like, yes. I'll cry by him, go back down there, and again, every inning as soon as I came back in, he was making sure I was okay. What right. was the last line after you? I mean, what if you couldn't go? Who was next? I don't know. I, Come on, Christian. Who was that? I played first in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe me. But that'd be you, right? Yeah, <laughs> now, I'm wondering, one final thing. Your team, your organization trades Mookie Betts, who's one of the top three players in baseball. Maybe one of the top two. And David Price, who was one of the heroes of the 2018 series. Do you worry that your organization is sending you guys a signal not this year we're not going for it this year we just took two of the best players away i don't think so i mean we go out there and we uh signed heim bloom and you see all the success that he brought over there to the rays and everything that they were able to do you know kind of on a lower payroll and um i think he's helping out the red sox i mean we tried signing mookie you mm -hmm. know but we just weren't they weren't able to come to the agreement and he's a free agent he's earned that right to enjoy this moment and exactly. you know we're able to uh if, he, if the trade does go through, then he goes over there. But I, I think Heim will be able to, and the rest of the Red Sox, you know, be able to get the guys that we need to get him. And yeah. if the trade doesn't go through, you just welcome him. Hey, welcome, welcome back. back. Hey. <laughs> <Take> <laughs> <care> <laughs> <of> <laughs> <life>. <laughs> guys, thanks so much Thank for coming you, by. I'll see you tonight at the dinner, but I appreciate course. your yeah. time. Thank you Good luck. Time. Christian yeah. Vasquez and Nathan Avaldi. All right, when we come back, we'll take phone calls, 1-800-919-3776. It's Kay, LaGreca, Rosenberg, Vasquez, Avaldi, and you right here on Yes and on